right, mother. Let's talk about SmackDown. We did some Ugh. WWE news earlier in the program, and all this has been such a good show. Why? Yeah, I know. Why well, go we here? won't. We won't take long. There was a couple of things I had some hope for. Um, and we've talked about this, that all the news in the WWE happens that anybody wants to hear about is happening behind the scenes. The, the programs are still what they are, and they're not unprofessional or cheaply produced or low budget. They're just kind of, for the most part, boring. Whereas over in AEW, because everybody's a goddamn loose cannon and nobody really knows what the fuck's going on, there's a higher chance of seeing a train wreck or a paralyzation or whatever. But nevertheless, I wanted to see on SmackDown Gunther and Brown Strongman. Because again... Braun Strowman, for those of you who are new listeners. Yeah, that big guy. Because again... Gunther is the today the business's most perfect wrestler. Every match he has is the match he should have with a particular guy. With Ricochet, it was the best match Ricochet's ever had. It made sense. The little guy fighting from underneath, you know, refusing to die, blah, blah, blah. Gunther always looks good. His matches always make sense. His opponents always look better in the process. I thought, well, this will be a challenge because again, old Brown. He's huge. He's big. Did I mention he's large? He's preternaturally massive. And that's how you got to sell him. And that's probably why they cut him a while back because somehow he'd worked his way into a couple million bucks a year. This guy is Andre with nowhere to go. Andre worked for years because he never stayed anywhere. He was oftentimes in the WWWF, but more often than not, he was out around the world appearing here and there. You never got tired of seeing a giant and seeing the strength he displayed, and he was a personality. But if you'd have seen him work every week after about four or five weeks, well, that would have been the end of that. And unfortunately, we've seen Brown for more than four or five weeks. There's ways you can make money with this guy, but he's very limited. Some of the things he can't do, he shouldn't do anyway. But then you shouldn't book him in a position where he needs to be doing them. So many of Gunther's strengths here were negated by strongman's size and or plottiness. And a lot of time, Gunther, the chops and manhandling people. He can't manhandle a guy this size. It would make sense if he did, and he can't to begin with. You can't move this guy around. That was part of the problem with this match. And they gave these two giant beasts a dumpy female referee. Like, boy, if shit breaks down, she's going to have to lay the law down and maybe grab somebody. Let's not put so, her down. She did nothing wrong. Well, no, but it just looks visually ridiculous to have this monster and this fucking evil Gunther in there with nobody to fucking keep order, but a, a a double for a fucking Walmart cashier. It's so, and I will recognize that Brown just did a nice work uh, up there in, they were in Green Bay. He was on Wisconsin TV and he was wearing shoes. They're doing a fundraiser for a kid that was killed at the thing Christmas two years ago in Waukesha when some nut ran his car through the crowd. So that's nice. I'm not knocking this guy, except he's limited. And you can't have this guy working a... T and this was a 20-minute match. Seemed like 30. And But they booked it this way. And, and Gunther was trying as best he could. At first, he was smart and wary of strong man and backing up and powdering out and putting the guy's strength over. He took a bump over the table for the goofy little shoulder tackle he does. And... That's fine if you'd have kept it high impact, moving at a brisk pace, get to the meat of the matter and get the finish done. This wouldn't have been bad, but it was 20 fucking minutes. And once Gunther took over, he posted Brown and started working the bad arm that he had attacked to set this match up. It was tough then because it, Strowman doesn't sell much, so he's not very good at it. And you say, well, a guy that big shouldn't sell much. Well, you're probably right. But he was trying to here because he was put in a position where he had to. 
he's a guy that's hard to move around and hard to do stuff to, and you can't call selling like you call spots in a match. You can't say it when, when the guys, it was stationary heat with an arm bar and or Strowman just down in one spot where he got hit or stomped. It wasn't Gunther's fault, but this match could have taken place in a snow globe. They didn't use any of the ring for the heat. And Strowman doesn't know enough. No, okay, boom, he's selling his arm. Yes, but when he's selling his arm, he's got to roll away to a different part of the ring to create some space and try to reach out and and pull himself up by the rope. So then Gunther's on him and he's wrapping that arm around the rope and he's doing it, working on it that way. And then Gun uh, Strowman can fucking bear paw him off and try to get on his knees to go the other way to holding his arm to try to get to his feet and Gunther can attack him from behind. And there can be motion to this. Instead, Strowman just laid there. And then finally, what I thought was going to be the comeback, he fires up and he nails both the Imperium guys off the apron and hits a power slam on Gunther and gets a two count. And they went to another break. It's like they're formatting... What did I say earlier in the program? It, with the uh, percentage of women's matches, they got to the point where they were having 50% of the women's matches because they had good girls. Now they feel like they got to have them whether they got to have the girls or not. Whoever's formatting this show just said, oh, the first match will get 20 minutes and not didn't take into account who was in the match. And I would usually try to write my televisions and give guys time based on what they could do best and then work it out from there rather than say these two, whoever these two are, they got to fill this amount of time. But anyway, did you notice during the trading when they got up and then at the end and they traded chops, Gunther was selling Strowman's chops more than Strowman was selling Gunther's, which wasn't at all. And that's his thing. So you either, either don't chop him or make him sell him, put him in a position where he's Weakened anyway, it has to sell him. So Gunther tried to make this palatable. Brown was doing the best he could, but this shouldn't have been this long or whatever. So finally, after all this stuff, Gunther was trying to kick it in at the end. Brown was trying to superplex. Gunther went to the bad arm to block it and got under him and was going to hit him with a hit Gunther or hit Strowman with a power bomb off the buckle. I assume maybe Brown's strongman has never been power bombed before. Either that or he's one of these people that don't like to go backwards or whatever. But when Gunther had him up for the power bomb and he tried to bend over and put him down flat, Brown, instead of kicking his feet up and taking the flat back bump, <laughs> put his feet down first instead of falling straight back. And so he gave him a power bomb to his feet and then to his back. One, two, three. Because of that power bomb, I was so shocked. That was the finish. I couldn't believe that, that, that somebody didn't say do something again. So it Brown strongman was beaten by a botched bump that couldn't have hurt my aunt Lola. And it was a 20-minute snooze fest that Gunther has never been involved in before. So both guys looked worse coming out of this. Um, and again, 20 minutes was the root of a lot of it. But what are your thoughts? You hit on my big one. It was 20 minutes. It felt a lot longer. It went a long time, and there's no good reason. There's no justification for this match need needing to go that long. You would have achieved at least the same more than likely a lot more if it had gone three minutes to five minutes and it just been nonstop and then you went to the finish. This was so long. The finish looked terrible. But I get it. They only have so many guys and they want to give They only everyone, have so many guys. They got 200 guys. They want to give everyone lots and lots and lots of time. I don't, this was terrible. I, I shouldn't uh, say it was terrible because I like Gunther typically. But, no, it, it was terrible, and also grading with what he normally does, but it wasn't his fault. And and a lot of it wasn't Brown's fault either. He doesn't really know what the fuck he's, he's involved in here. You can tell, and he's never been put in a position where 
anybody could exert any kind of physical dominance over him, so he's even more green at that than he is at everything else. Anyway, there's a there's a whole thing going on with the bloodline, but we'll we'll recap that at the end. Um Rey Mysterio in the ring for a promo, not his strong point to begin with. <laughs> Talking about how his Christmas was ruined by Dominic and Ripley and etc. Fox bleeped shit. And to make sure that they bleeped it, they bleeped a couple words beforehand and a couple words afterwards. So you know where they stand. So wonder how that AEW Fox relationship will work out when they buy the company. So Ray wants to enter and win the Royal Rumble, and then the music plays, and here comes Karrion Cross and Scarlet. And has any would you know that that was the Karrion Cross of six months ago if he walked out and You've asked me several times recently about his hair. His hair is beautiful. And this time it hit me just how how much less intimidating he is. I mean, he came out <laughs> in his nice outfit. I mean, it's it, no, no, nice outfit. He's wearing a white shirt and a red tie and a, a leather overcoat, not like a leather biker jacket, but a nice stylish leather overcoat. The hair is beautiful. He looks like a well-conditioned stockbroker. They look like they're going out in Long Island City just to hang out. I mean, it didn't look, he needs to be bald again. I hate to say it. I, I, know, oh, I think it's too late. I've, I've heard of guys losing their powers when they get their hair cut, but when they grow it back, but he doesn't even look like the same. And he started talking, and I started giving Harley Quinn belly rubs, and I forgot to take notes. But he has no look at all now. He looks like a, a businessman walking down the street if the guy works out in a gym. And then he came and gave a, a speech. It yeah. just that that's the other thing. Once he got on the mic, it was nothing. He used to be intimidating in NXT. I don't see it here right now. Well, and also the delivery. He finally ended up asking Rey Mysterio who he hates worse. Does he hate his son Dominic for failing to be, you know, what he wanted him to be, or does he hate himself for failing to raise Dominic? And Cross is doing the dramatic delivery growl with no real, real behind it. And when he does that, then Ray nails Cross, and they have an awkward fight, and Scarlet trips Ray, and Cross chokes him out. Uh, I was concerned about his nice silk tie that he had on while he was doing all of that. There were four of the girls in the back exchanging scripted comments and bad acting, and little Liv Morgan slapped Raquel Gonzalez Rodriguez de la Molina Jr. So they're going to fight tonight. Zia Lee versus Tegan Knox. <sighs> this is where they were sweetening some noise, weren't they? The noise sweetening people got in on this one. And again, we've talked about it. There's no sense repeating what we said earlier in the program. I say bring them out for two minutes, and here's who we got on OnlyFans this week. You'll make millions of dollars. So here came Bray Wyatt. The door, the lantern, the lights. It's an amazing spectacle. And there was a rocking chair in the ring in a spotlight, and he comes in the ring and sits in the rocking chair. and. Okay, they did play a, a a little clip of last week with Uncle Howdy or Captain Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy or whoever the fuck he and it was five minutes into the entrance before he spoke his first word. Which I will not try to recount what he said for obvious reasons, but it was about just ad admit who you are, be yourself, whatever the fuck. So he admits that he is Captain Howdy, Uncle Howdy. But that that would have been better before we saw that there was another fucking guy in the ring next to him that was supposed to be Boy Howdy last week. So Boy Howdy, everybody thought when he first started talking about this, he's working an angle with himself. He's Boy Howdy. Well, then he brings out a Boy Howdy, and then he admits the next week to being Boy I don't know. He's got a match with L.A. Knight at the Royal Rumble, the Mountain Dew Pitch Black match. He mentioned L.A. Knight's name once in this promo, saying when the lights go out, you should run. 
So apparently it's going to be a dark match of some description with very faint lighting. And, and, and otherwise, we have no idea what the rules are or the stipulations or whatever. And he didn't spend any time at all getting us excited about it, did he? This sucks. I don't understand how anyone likes Bray Wyatt. I don't understand what they see in him. Unless you're just into, like, Spalding Gray speeches. I don't understand why you would like Bray Wyatt. This is boring. He never gets physical with anyone. Once you see that, you'll realize why, maybe, because he's his matches are terrible. I hate this. I, You know, the guy can talk if he was directed and channeled into doing wrestling and having wrestling promos about people he doesn't like that he's going to wrestle and promote them. I bet you'd be great, but I don't know what the fuck this fucking foolishness is. Um, and then more bloodline we'll get to. And then Liv Morgan and Raquel of the many last names. Is Liv Morgan's getting a push? Is that her settlement? No, oh, stop it. Come no, well, why then? Why? I mean, and, and, it, it wasn't bad enough just that she's the size of an embryo. But then they made her hardcore and she loves the barbed wire and the breaking the tables and blah, blah, blah. So now they put her in the ring with Raquel, and I thought, my God, Raquel Gonzalez has all kinds of potential. She's got size. She's had some pretty good matches. And I'm thinking, they're going to have her put this fucking little pixie over. But thank God, Raquel won. So hopefully the whole Liv Morgan hardcore, evil, demented, whatever is over. But... It's just unbelievable. It's ridiculous. They were definitely sweetening the audio here, I think, because it looked like the crowd were sitting on their hands. And then in the back, there's Charlotte and Cruella DeVille having a big old fight slash pull apart with the referees and the security and etc. And again, as I think I said a week or two ago about some of the men that did something like this, this wasn't bad. They had some activity going on. It's girls of size and look that you can get into. The fucking guys look like they were doing their best, try to pull it apart, blah, blah, blah. It's certainly better than the AEW's men's backstage fights, but still it happens constantly. It's lost. People just look over it now. Backstage fight amongst girls or guys in a, on a wrestling program. <laughs> Anyway, what I thought was the best of the pro uh, uh, thing on the program was the Cody package. Boy, this could have been transplanted from a UFC fucking production or from college basketball on CBS or a, a sports presentation just slanted to wrestling. The torn peck, the not only showing him working with it and accentuating what he went through and the shocked looks on the fans' faces, making him a top guy, a sympathetic figure, then the doctor footage, the surgery footage, the comments from Andrews and Birmingham. This was a package that could have been on any professional sports show to, to show that one of our top athletes is rehabbing and coming back. So again, it still looks like nothing has changed. They're going to bring Cody back with the dream of following in his daddy's footsteps, winning the title, and boy, they need him badly. What'd you think? Really good video package. You really hope they don't mess things up with Cody if they have a chance here. And here's the question for you. He's been talking about this thing where his daddy could have gotten the belt and they took it away from him. He's been talking about it for at least a few years now on TV. What if Cody doesn't get the belt? Is that like Luger not getting the belt at SummerSlam? Oh, if he don't eventually end up with one, at least they've made noises they're going to split the title up again after WrestleMania or whatever the fuck might happen. You know what? 
if he doesn't win some form or fashion of the title, he no, he's deader than Kelsey's nuts. He's flattered a plate full of piss, whatever simile you'd like to apply. But here's something nobody's thought about because everybody's thinking, is, is Roman going to wrestle the rock? Maybe it looks like that's in doubt, but if there's some way that they could figure two nights at WrestleMania, one for Roman and rock and the next one for, because we talked about that can't be a title match and it wouldn't make sense if it wasn't, it doesn't need to be. And the other night, if they do some kind of deal with Roman and Cody and come up with some kind of freaky decision where each guy can lay claim to one fucking belt. That might solve a lot of their problems. Is there, is the, is there, is there a finish and a restart and another finish? Is there some tomfoolery? Do the belts themselves become into play where each guy ends up with possession of one of the belts and or a, a victory they can claim? And then you've got the controversy of who the real champion is. You could get some mileage out of that. I'd shoot it down if you want. Only if you have the participants. We've been told, we were told maybe a year ago that Roman Reigns was going to start winding things down. Working less shows, and they don't even run that many shows. Doing less TVs, he's done less TVs. Wants to do other things in Hollywood. Is this Roman Reigns winding down? Or is this the end of Roman Reigns for a while? Is he going away for a little while? That's the question I guess we have to ask about WrestleMania and about what they're going to do. Well, I, I don't think... Because then he has to Vince, beat The Rock, and then he has to lose to Cody. With Vince McMahon, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. With Vince McMahon around number one, ain't no stars going to be making any less appearances than they are right now, as long as Vince is around, even if he has to pay him. If he's trying to sell this thing. Number two, The Rock's almost got to win. One would think, just to... <laughs> Because it's going to be a downer if he doesn't, but that's also, he, he can't have a title match because everybody knows know well, he's not going to come back and defend the title. It wouldn't be about the title. It'd be about the the um, the mega status of the match. At the same time, Rock would want to put Roman Reigns over, and at one point, I would think that would be the thing to do. But at this, as you just said, if Roman's not going to be full-time, then maybe make the people happy and... Roman can go in the next night somewhat vulnerable, whatever the fuck. But you know Cody's going to be there as much as he can be there. I think they've got to get some type of recognition on Cody if they're not going to blow the whole thing off with Roman. If Cody beats, they can still get mileage out of Cody and Roman rematches. So I don't think that would be just, oh, he'll drop it to Cody and you never see him again. He's off doing sitcoms. I don't know. You brought up something before that made me think of this. In the next six months, if you are a top WWE star whose contract comes up, or even an outside, well, let's just worry about WWE. If you're a top WWE star whose contract comes up, what's your negotiations like with everything happening right now and WWE need, needing to be in a strong position for a sale and Vince in the mix and chaos? In terms of what you ask for, what's it like right now? Well. If I've got the ability, if I'm a top star that has reached the status where I've got the ability to talk directly to Vince, I'm talking directly to Vince. I'm saying, Vince, the whole thing's going to be sold. You need your star power. You need the the ratings. Give, give me the ball, Vince. Give me the ball and a lot of money, and I'll run with it, and I'll make the people in Lithuania want to chip in and buy this company. I th you know, I think now the Brocks and the Romans and even the Cody's to come back and anybody they can put in, in a top, top spot. I wouldn't be surprised if Cena drops in a time or two over the next couple months. They, you know, that's the way Vince would go to a quick fix for ratings and interest level is names, star power. So everybody that's got that all four of them, they're in a pretty good spot. <sighs> Let's see if Vince asked the Undertaker to come back. Well, and that's... 
even if he might not wrestle, I can't imagine that we wouldn't see him on the programming if times got tough. But anyway, then we're at the main event on SmackDown. Let's get to it, because all show long, the deal was the main event is Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. They're the old friends, Steen and Generico, doing it again. And Sammy at the top of the program had gone to the Bloodline locker room and Paul intercepts him. Hey, Shmooley. Hey, he wants to talk to the guys. He wants to talk to the Usos and Solo and Roman. Oh, they're not here. No, they want you to do this all on your own. Uh, oh, okay. Prove yourself to Roman. You know, you can do it. That's the best thing. Blah, blah, blah. And then later on, they had Sammy and Owens argue with each other. Owens is trying to explain to Sammy that the bloodline don't give a shit about him. And obviously Sammy feels different. He feels like he belongs. So anyway, that was the main event and they gave him 20 minutes, which again, the same time somebody thought it was okay. Well, let's give Owens and Zane the same amount of time as Gunther and Brown Strongman. These guys have worked with each other a million times. They could do fucking three hours, and they'd love to. As a matter of fact, I've seen it a hundred times. I've never seen it with Steen 30 pounds lighter than he was in Ring of Honor and Zane with no mask on. They can both work, but they'll be doing this when they're 70 in their backyard for fun without even spectators because they just love to, to work with each other, sometimes to the detriment of everything else. But nevertheless... You know, much of the match on the floor or the apron, because that's the stuff they like to do. But Zane, again, that buggy whip armed, no definition, but he can pick Kevin Owens up and give him a brain buster on the apron and not kill either one of them. The guy is amazing with the strength that he that Zane shows. And the same thing with Owens as as I mentioned, next to Roman Reigns, he looks like a mattress that somebody pulled half the stuffing out of, and he's fucking pale, he's translucent, but he can move that big bulbous ass around the ring. So, and they they did, an, have you seen now, this was something that Moxley and Page did, and same week, they did the same thing. Zane just out of nowhere, suplexed Owens right on the top of his head, and Owens bounced up to his feet, and clotheslined the fuck out of Sammy, and then they both sold. Well, it's nice to know now that if I take a sledgehammer and hit somebody over the head with it, that they've got about eight seconds they can still fuck with me before they feel the effects of it. So anyway, at, at the point was they were going home, going into the finish, Sammy had dropped Owens on his head again, was setting up for the big kick, and suddenly the Usos and Solo just roll in the ring and attack Owens, and there's the disqualification, and Sammy's like, what the fuck? They're not even, not even supposed to be here. And they hit their finish on Owens and beat him up on the floor, and Solo gives him the thumb, and Sammy is shocked, and he's like, I was supposed to do this, and but he puts the finger up anyway like we're the ones. They had a 20-minute match. It was basically the same as all their matches. They did a lot of shit. Nothing was really stunk. Some of it didn't make any sense. But then, cheap DQ, further storyline. Sammy's conflicted now. Oh, golly. The end. Well, that was the end. That was SmackDown. What do you, what do you, didn't say what you thought of the match? You know, I'm in the minority. I, I have a difficult time watching these two work together because I know they're best friends. And it's hard for me to take anything they're doing out there. It's hard for me to suspend disbelief at all with these two working against each other because I know they're best friends. They do have that, that strong emotional bond between them. I've seen them wrestle against each other in Ring of Honor. I've seen them in NXT. I've seen them here. You know, I get it's a career-long thing, and like you said, there'll be old men doing this in their backyards. That'll be their last... You know their last match is going to be against each other. You just know it. It has to be. But I mean, it's weird when you watch a match that's... Uh, that where they're laying shit in like this, and you know they're best friends. I mean, I know Flair and Steamboat got along, but I don't know. It's it's weird for me when I well, watch no, these two. Well, no, actually, here's the thing: in the in the old days or the territory days, 
only the people really in the business knew that the guys in the ring beating the shit out of each other were their were best friends. And best friends had some of the greatest matches. But now every fan in the world knows who all of the wrestlers really in real life like and don't like. So there sometimes is a difference. I see what you're saying. Oh, well, that was that. What do you think of where they're going or where they seem to be going with the bloodline, Sammy and Owens, the storyline? Well, that obviously Sammy is already a baby face because the people have taken to him because of the entertaining way that he's perpetrated all this. And obviously the end goal has to be for, you know, Sammy to become a full fledged baby face and to split off and be his, you know, his own man or in support of Kevin Owens against the Usos. Cause Owens and Zayn against the Usos with this angle behind it will be interesting. You don't think it's, and I'm not saying it should be, you don't think it's Reigns against Zayn? Well, I was about to say Reigns and, not before, if you have Reigns and Sammy before you have Reigns and Owens versus the Usos, you've eaten your goddamn, you know, uh, apple pie before you had your steak and potato. Eventually, we got to see Sammy and Roman, but They've got to work up through first and and also where solo fit in this. Maybe is it is it solo that finally Sammy has enough of because something he does. The Usos then fucking bombard Sammy. Owens comes out, helps fucking Sammy. You got Sammy and the Usos. But what's Roman think about this? Well, finally Roman may have to teach Sammy a lesson in person. Well, Sammy Zayn in this lifetime or this universe is never gonna beat Roman Reigns, but that match would have a lot of interest and they could gimmick it up with some smoke and mirrors where you didn't have to sacrifice Sammy like a virgin to King Kong. With the amount of time they've put into this and this being the main thing and at times the only thing to watch on SmackDown, it's been months and months and months. Is that a WrestleMania main event? Roman Reigns versus Sammy? No. No. It, I, I wouldn't even say that they couldn't do it at the Royal Rumble. That'd, that'd be quick, but I'm I'm not saying another even a secondary pay per view, but it's not. If you if it's two th- nights, if it's two nights, is that one of the matches for Roman Reigns? Well, only if The Rock and Cody Rhodes have other plans, and then maybe they could work it in. But uh, you know, again, I think. Obviously, they could get a ton of mileage out of the Usos and Zayn and Owens because they're also there every week. And then, you know, Heyman, I'm sure, will have some fucking ideas of how to mix and match these, you know, these attractions. But you're you're going to get Sammy and Roman eventually. I wouldn't imagine it'd be a long program. And I think the odds of Sammy ever winning that match are astronomical, but it would have a lot of interest on one of the major shows. Just, I don't know. I don't see that at WrestleMania. All right. Well, that was SmackDown. Who knows how many people saw it because it's Saturday and we don't have the ratings.